that took two and a half minutes to find the right lighting now. Hey guys, how are we all doing? Hope we are well. Now hopefully if you watch my introduction, my Tudor introduction video, you'll understand that I am making a full Tudor outfit for a May Day parade near where I live um, and it's going to be a green outfit for pretty much head to toe. There will be some, some historical re relaxation for some parts but I'm going to be trying as historically respectful as I can when it comes to using fabrics um, and not necessarily techniques but I'll try. So today we must start with the most important layer, the underlayer, because this was your protection against all your finery. Um, the linen layer would be cl the closest to your body, it would be the most hard wearing, it would be what gets washed all the time, it's what you sweat in, but it's very very important. So a good base layer is where we're going to be starting with and I am going for a very simple woman's smock. Um, the light's still rubbish so if you can't if i can't see it i'll imp superimpose a picture um of the pattern yeah yeah Ooh, maybe there um this book is a typical tudor um as a recent um a production by jane malcolm davies and nina michaela um, and they put huge amounts of work into this book um it's not just a pattern book it is an insight into the history and the sociology of clothing for your typical Tudor from your lowly right up to your middling and I'll go through a bit more detail um, as we go through this process. Um, so this is a simple, the way that they've um, patterned these um, sort of the patterns in these books is, is quite common. Um, they have a squid reference and each square equals a unit of measurement um, and it's up to me to make those units of measurements fit my measurements but it's a very simple smock pattern it it goes in at the shoulders quite square you have a few gauze two sleeves two gussets wristband I'm gonna go for a frill and neck frill and a wrist frill because you know what I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna imagine that I am a woman who would be in the middling class I'm not, I'm not gentry I'm, I'm not way up there but I am somebody who is married to somebody who's in a profession of the middling class. So imagine I'm maybe married to a solicitor or somebody in the legal profession. I'm not, not me, Just the, the woman I'm imagining who would wear this. So she will have a nice little frill on the neck and on the wrist because she can, she can, she can afford it. Um, I spoke a bit about previously in my video, but here again, hopefully you can actually see it a bit better in this light. This is a linen, 100% linen. It's a medium weight linen. I'm wondering whether it's technically probably a little too heavy. Um, it, it will be fine. Um, so I've got this lovely 100% linen, and it would have been linen that they would have had. The finer the linen, the more expensive it would have been, the higher up the social class you were. So whilst I'm middling, I probably could have afforded a bit better, but you can only get what you can get. Um, and technically it would have been white. I very much doubt they would have had too many colourful smocks, because why would you? But I'm going to go for green because the theme is green. Um, so. I'm going to not necessarily pattern this out on paper because it's reasonably straightforward. It is shoulders, hips, however long I want it. So it looks like it's going to be just below the knee, maybe a little bit longer. And up to me how much side gauze I want to make them, how wide I want to make them. Obviously the bigger the sleeve, the poofier. So we'll see. And if you haven't didn't watch my original video, I will be sewing this all by hand. Yes. You heard me right, I'm sewing it all by hand. I have pure linen thread. I got this online from a shop called Studio Flax. They are based in Bristol. I will link them down below. I think they do international shipping. So I, 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 always, I always like to shop local where I can, although Bristol is nowhere near to London, but you know what I mean. Um, so I'm gonna be using this lovely pale green which matches quite nicely, a little bit of a contrast. Um, hopefully I've got 
think about three meters of this stuff. Um, I'll keep a running tally of the cost so you can see how much I spend. Um, just as a mini caveat, um, I am in a double income, no kids household, so I do have a fair bit of disposable income. Not huge amounts, but we're both comfortable. So what I don't want you looking at is going, oh my god, how much has she spent? Because I can, aff I can afford it. Now, if you're looking to do something similar and you can't afford it, please don't, please don't worry. Please don't think it's going to be rubbish. It's going to look awful. Although I do, re I don't recommend polyester close to your skin because you're going to get a little bit sparky. What am I going to do today? Well, hopefully I'm going to be able to do a bit of um, thread pulling so I can get some straight lines because linen is a pretty shifty um, fabric to work on. Um, if I can get it cut out, that's even better. And even if I could maybe even start hand sewing it today, I think I'd have done a very good job. And I'm hoping there's going to be enough fabric here for me to make a coif out of this um, head covering. That goes right onto my head. Again, it's to help to keep the you know, your outer headgear clean um, from all the hair oils that you get in. Um, get in your head so i hope we'll have enough of that and hopefully i'm going to have enough to put into the underside of my french hood as well <laughs> so that's my plan and i'm going to bring you along with me come on, let's let's dive in okay guys here you see me laying out my linen fabric getting ready to be made into a smock what i'm doing here is just working out some basic measurements and comparing it to the book that i have this book works on a grid system so one square equals an amount of um, measurement and in this case it's one square to one inch so i know roughly how many inches i need and i'm just now comparing these measurements on the book to my own measurements to make sure that i've got the right um, space i need But here you see me thread pulling and everything but you know what you're not interested in thread pulling i know that you know that you want to know the name of the person i'm creating you want to know the world that i am about to make and you know what two seconds afternoon guys just checking in here with you today it's a couple of days since i last filmed and i've made some pretty good progress as you can see here i've got my schmock cut out um i've got my sleeves the sleeve gore wrist um cuffs and ruffle i've got the neck uh, collar and ruffle there, a couple of cat toys and cat tree, sorry about that. Um, and I've got my side gauze here. Um, I've only cut two, the book says to cut four, but I don't really want that much volume. If I feel like my skirt, my kirtle skirt needs a bit extra, I can make an extra petticoat. Um, I did an awful lot of thread pulling. You might be able to see that there, just roughly. There's a bit of an odd line on the gore. I've pulled all the um, seam lines. It's quite a marathon, my thumb really hurts, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it all in one go, if I'm honest. <laughs> but there you go, it's looking pretty good. Um, pretty pleased with it. So yeah, that is it. Take care, speak to you later. Bye. Sorry about that, I, I didn't like to talk over myself, I thought it'd be very rude. So whilst you watch me do a little bit of uh, sewing, here's me now spinning a yarn. Yeah, sorry, that, that, was, that was rubbish. Um, <laughs> let's get to it. So what is the year? The year is 1533. Initially I picked it up because I like the idea of 1 and 5 equaling 6 and 3 and 3 equaling 6 and you know what? It turns out to be quite a year. It's the year that Henry VIII marries Anne Boleyn. So it's a big year. And my, my Tudor lady, she's a 24 year old recently married. Her family are cloth merchants. It kind of fits. And she's married into another cloth merchant family. It was a little bit of a convenient marriage, you know, making sure the business is good. But you know what? They grew up together. And actually, you know what? They, they do actually love each other. And that's what I'm hoping to do. So, who is this woman I've created? Her name is Lettuce Talk Morton. Yes, you heard me right. Her name is Lettuce. Please don't laugh. Lettuce was a Tudor name. And Thockmorton is her married name. She's married to Walter Thockmorton. She was originally a Vinter. The part of the Vinter family cloth merchants um and oh hold on a second i think i'm about to come in here and um interrupt myself be back be back back okay guys i think we're almost done you see we've got lots of sewing done already all of this has been hand sewn and um, it's taken quite a while 
um, but it's been a lot of fun, been enjoying it. Um, and yeah, so all I've got to do now, <laughs> she says all I've got to do, is finish off the insides and hem it. But there is quite a lot to hem, it probably far longer than it really should have done. Um, and I need to get on with mocking up the um, kirtle top and the high round gown top. Um, as well as making the French hood and the coif, so you know some fair bits to do there um, But yeah, now I'm really pleased with how it looks nice little um, embellishments here and You can see I've got a few different quick greens going on there as well nice um, Yeah, so hopefully the next time you see this it will be hemmed and on me Take care guys. Bye. Bye Sorry about that. I keep interrupting myself. It's terrible Anyway, welcome to the world, Lettuce Throckmorton, age 24, recently married to Walter Throckmorton. Her father is Geoffrey Vinter, her mother is Lavinia Vinter, and she has a brother also called Geoffrey. Uh, don't, it gets a bit confusing when they call each other in the house, but yeah, that's just the way it is. And her in-laws are Thomas and Lydia Throckmorton. I hopefully I'll be able to build out a bit more about her, you know, 1533 was quite a year um, and I'm hoping that I can start to build a world whilst I create this uh, Tudor outfit. So, with that being said, please can I introduce you to Lettuce Rock Morton. Now oh, there you are, love. Well done. <laughs> As you can see, this is the smock I made. I really love the ruffle. I mean, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but I love that ruffle. It just is lovely. I'll say it's a ruffle, it's more of a frill, but you know what I mean. There we go. The lighting isn't great, I apologise, but hey, you know me. I think all of this is hand stitched, absolutely everything. I used 28 meters, yes, 28 meters of thread to th sew this, and that doesn't even include the poly cotton that I used to do all the hand felling. That's a lot. So, what do we think, guys? Yeah, I really like it. It's a lovely, very simple out. Um, item I've made, um, all hand sewn, 100% hand sewn, inside and out. Um, the fabric was really good to work with, I really enjoyed working with it. Um, and yeah, it, it's got quite, it feels quite definite. It's not too heavy, but it definitely feels like I'm wearing something. So I don't know whether that's going to help or hinder um, when I put my uh, kirtle and all my other layers on, but I think it's very nice. You can't see, but it's uh, a couple of inches below my knee as well so it's got a good length to it and um, and yeah i'm pretty pleased with it hope you like it too um sorry about that if the head's a bit messy i can't quite see but um and this is the, the hairstyle that she would have worn no oh, hair's just sticking out there but anyway the coif will be over the top and then the french hood after that so all is good bit of a bit fiddly but i can do it just about do it myself obviously uh, old Lettuce would have had some um, help around the house to get her hair done every day. Well, if you've got it, why not? Uh, but yeah, there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Please like, share and subscribe, especially if you're interested in me making this outfit. There are loads more videos to come. Um, and I've got at least one more already in the editing suite. And um, that's a fabric haul, a little shopping trip. Come up town with me. Oh, hopefully you'll stick around for that um, and I'm just now working on um, the mock-up for the kirtle I'm not going to show much of the mock-up process because it's going to be almost exactly the same when I cut it out of the main fabric and that's what everybody is here for main fabric not calico but here we go yeah nice very nice indeed well this has been a crazy cat lady production to you who have been watching an unoriginal idea Fare thee well.